Indeed, we do have a story to tell, my Lord, and God, let us indeed to proclaim it, my Lord. God, we thank you that in you, my Lord Jesus, that we are transformed, we are renewed, my Lord Jesus. God, we are healed, my Lord God. We are redeemed, my Lord Jesus. We are forgiven, my King. God, we are considered to be righteous and holy, my Lord Jesus. In the midst of our funk, our filth. In the midst of the things that over, overcrowd our minds, my Lord Jesus. And the things that lead our hearts astray. In our worries, and our fears, and our stresses, and our anxieties. <clears throat> when we feel least thin, my Lord Jesus, and absolutely worthless my lord god but yet there you are jesus telling us my king that we're holy and righteous god that we would have a savior my king that we could come to my lord jesus to take our burdens off my lord god and lay them down at your feet my lord jesus and there you are my king telling us god that you desire to give us rest god so i thank you today i thank you for those who are bold enough and brave enough god to come to the altar to seek your face my lord jesus god for healings for deliverance, for freedom, for restoration, for newness. Thank you, my King, for those who made the seat in front of them the altar, my Lord Jesus. God, seeking the very same thing, my Lord God. I thank you that as a people, my King, that we are able to call you Father. Thank you indeed, my King, that you are indeed a friend to the sinners, my Lord. But oftentimes, the only thing that we can say is simply hallelujah, my Lord Jesus, because we don't have words to begin to be created in our minds to truly praise you, to speak of your goodness and your holiness. of us this morning, my Lord God. Minister to us as only you can. And God, we give you honor and glory, my King. And all God's baby said, <clears throat> Amen. Church, y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Yes, he is indeed. <clears throat> Guys, before we get going, man, just a few things. Uh, first and foremost, man, we, uh, we always love to acknowledge and give God, God glory for the uh, Mighty Men of Dare Challenge. So thank you, Jesus, for each of them, the families that they represent, and the uh, redemption of the Lord upon their lives. And I know that he's doing great and amazing things in each and every single one of you guys. So we're grateful for y'all and grateful to have you guys with us. So we salute y'all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Man, uh, also, I think, is there like, uh, is it potluck April 6th? April 5th. See, so yes, I was testing. She's fast. She's fast. Potluck, April 5th, 2023, 630. So, man, bring a dish, man. We always have a good time uh, here, man, at the church, just uh, uh, eating each other's food, um, picking on each other. Uh, if you're not here, talking about one another, because that's what Christians do. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, come out to it, man. I promise you, you will have a great, great time. I promise you that. If, uh, if Miss Faith comes, she's only allowed to bring fried chicken. So uh, <laughs> praise the Lord for it. So, uh, but, uh, but real talk, man, April 5th, come out to it. I promise you, you guys will love it. Amen? And then when they bring up, my, hey, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> See ya. Where's your tacos? <laughs> que pasa, mi amiga? <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. But we also have uh, our sister Mo is going to come up and talk for a second. Man, she wants to fill you in on a few things. Praise the Lord. So if we could give her a, ra a round of applause. That would be amazing. I'm just gonna she turn. brought out the big Bible. <laughs> I'm going to start <laughs> writing dissertations for you to do this. <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> Um, one thing is that I announced, I think, a month ago. Thank you. It looks happy. I'm not going to read this to them. Um, we're looking for volunteers for Kids Source. If you have a call and a purpose to teach and lead, we appreciate you. If you don't and you just want to fill the need, we don't want that. We want you to really want to be there because it matters, doesn't it, Brittany? It does. Well, you know. Um, we are starting the older kids preteens class in August, so we are going to need to fill some spots in the middle group, kindergarten through fifth, because a couple of us are going to be moving on to preteens. So help! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, kind of not really. So anyway, what I'm really yeah. up here to announce: just come talk to me if you want the scoop. You don't have to come up with lesson plans or anything. I do that. So just. Be there and ready to love. Um, we are starting a verse mapping small group. A few of them, actually. Cindy asked me if I would lead one of these last year, and my life got really crazy, and I couldn't do it. But here we are. I have had some interest. If you have any kind of preconceived notion as to what verse mapping is, I want you to throw it away. Um, I have taught it online. I've taught it in person. And I've had people up to 70 years old actually excited to study the Bible with this format. You do not need $50 journals that you find on Facebook ads. And you do not need color-coded markers. You don't need all these fancy, complicated things. It's just going to be a good time of growing in his word together. Yeah. So there's details, sign-ups in the lobby. And we're going to have a third session starting mornings on Tuesdays later in April. But I'll talk about that later. So that's it. Hallelujah. That's what's up. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and also, man, we have uh, Men's Fellowship April 1st. So, fellas, don't forget, it's not an April Fool's. Come on. So, uh, don't be a fool and show up. See what we did there? But, uh, but I promise you it's going to be fun, man. We have one of our awesome sisters who is going to make us a homemade breakfast. And I promise you, I've had her cooking. It's delicious. You do not want to miss it. Amen. So make sure you sign up out there, man. It's going to be a great, great time for sure. I pray that you guys have had an awesome week. We've had an awesome week, man. Uh, yesterday was uh, opening season uh, for uh, my son's uh, baseball, baseball league. I've quickly learned <laughs> baseball parents are freaking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are insane. Like, like, I believe it. It's it's Dude, like, I'm out there, I'm like, man. So in my mind, this is how my mind thinks. I'm like, there is, there is no, no scouts out here. I promise. Right. Like, I didn't see anybody from the Yankees checking Grayson and, you know, writing everything down because he's seven. You know what I mean? And I, I saw, I saw, like, <laughs> my, <laughs> one kid gets the ball and it was an overthrow so uh, the Dodgers that we were playing uh, um, is advancing and the Dodgers are stacked I swear it's le uh, the league is rigged but uh, no I'm picking but, uh, but as he's advancing a mother and father as the kid picks up the ball is screaming throw the ball throw the ball and the coach is going, don't throw the ball! Don't throw the ball! Throw the ball! And he's going, don't throw the ball! I'm like, oh my gosh! Just play ball! <laughs> right? I'm like, holy crap! So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is absolutely insane. So I strap everywhere I go. And so <laughs> most of the time I don't show it. But I started to, sh I put it up on my chest. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Don't throw the ball, bro. I'll say it one more time. Say it one more again. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like it was absolutely insane. <laughs> one kid, one kid, he knew he was out. You know, look, I'll admit, look, my son Grayson can hit. 
Praise the Lord. <laughs> Double A shows up at my house with a brand new baseball bat for my boy. Bless his heart, right? Awesome, man. Got a beautiful hit, double. Best hit in the entire league. <laughs> I kid, but it was a beautiful hit. <clears throat> Another kid gets up, man, and hits the ball. He knew he was up. Listen, Grayson is not fast. Right? Like, he's like, he's like Shaggy on Scooby-Doo. Like, he's like this before it actually begins to... <laughs> and then, then you're like, yes! You know what I'm saying? He got a double, praise the Lord. Any other kid, it probably would have been a uh, um, home run. You know what I'm saying? But he got a double, praise the Lord. But another kid, a little bit slower than him, or a lot of bit, but... Uh, so he knew he was going to get out at first. So instead of running it all the way out, hey, look, I thought to myself, I feel you. I feel you, homie. So he knew he was going to get out, so he just didn't. And his dad, <laughs> no lie, his dad goes, I, at this point, I'm in the dugout. And his dad goes, run it out! Are you kidding me? Run it out! <laughs> and he's just getting heated. And like he's right up against my dugout. Or not my dugout because I'm not a coach. I was just <laughs> inviting myself into the dugout because that's what baseball parents do. <laughs> so, so I got up and he's like right here. So I went. <laughs> tried to block his view because he's tearing his kid up. Now I realize he's like 6'4", so he's just looking over me, run it out, run it out. You know what I mean? But I'm like, good gosh, this is insane. So I say all that to say this. Pray for me that at one of these games I don't get arrested. <laughs> I'm pretty tight with the people who would patrol that area, but, but pray for me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but, uh, but like, you know, when you look at it, man, sports parents just in general. I remember uh, uh, growing up in Newport News. Um, God's country. We, uh, um, <laughs> the news will tell you that it's the devil's country. However, but, uh, but my friend, uh, uh, DJ Anderson, his father was uh, Newport News PD, which kept us out of a lot of trouble. But, um, he also coached. <laughs> I'll never forget one time he coached football and, uh, this guy is yelling, why isn't my son playing? And uh, he keeps going off and calling the coach all types of names. And finally, uh, Mr. Anderson uh, throws his clipboard down and he turns around and he says, Because your son sucks. That's why he's not playing. I was like, that was amazing. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> people are crazy. But as parents, man, we get delusional about our kids. You know what I mean? Like, they're the greatest, they're the best. And praise the Lord to us, they should be. Right, but it's easy to become delusional about things, right? And, and we've been in a sermon series what we have been talking about, uh, 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 it's called Truth Is, but we've been talking about the truth about ourselves. And in this sermon series, man, we have been discovering how in order to truly walk this out with Christ, we have to know the truth about ourselves, right? So in order for us to truly and honestly do it, right? Now, unfortunately, truth be told, more times than not, we really don't want to know the truth about ourselves. We don't want to be 100% honest with ourselves. We declare that we want to be 100% honest with other people. However, most of the time we are not. And what I mean by that is we will automatically rip them up and judge them for their sin. However, oftentimes we are delusional about our own sin. Right? There was a, uh, um, a doctor... Uh, um, uh, he, was a, he is a uh, moral psychiatrist, and, and he won a Nobel Prize, and he states this, pretty cool quote. He stated that we cannot be trusted uh, in what it is that we truly see. Why? Because we lie to ourselves so often that we are hardwired to, hard to delude ourselves. Right? Like, this is crazy. And, and understand what he's saying is that we are, are so misled, right? To, de, to be deluded is, is to be misled, uh, to mislead the mind and or judgment, to deceive and or to trick. And if you think about this, how often have you been doing something wrong? Have you been doing something that you know isn't right, that you know is against the will of God or the word of God, right? That, like you just 100% know this, you're doing it, but yet you get so pissed off at somebody else who is doing the exact same thing that you're doing. The exact same thing that you are doing. Right? And we get so torn up about them. 
And Jesus actually begins to warn us about this, right? When he talks about it's so easy for us to see the speck in somebody else's eye, but yet we don't see the plank in our own eye. Right, like that plank goes unnoticed. He says so much more in, in Matthew's uh, gospel. He says, uh, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. How can, I, how can you say to your brother, uh, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Like this is just absolutely amazing. You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly. I can see clearly now the plank is gone. <laughs> right? To remove the speck from your brother's eye. That's all I got because that's all the verse that I gave. It. Praise the Lord. And, like, if, and if you think about this, this is crazy because we do the exact same thing that somebody else is doing, but yet it becomes so easy for us to judge them. It becomes so easy for us to rip them apart. And then when we get called out for doing the same thing, what we like to begin to do, although our sin is the same, we like to make believe that our sin is different. We will make excuses for ourselves. Jesus says, judge not, least you be judged. And what Jesus is talking about, make no mistake about it, Jesus is talking about judging others. Now, sadly, this is one of the most misquoted, misused, mistaught passages of Scripture when it comes to the teachings of Jesus. And it's misused and misquoted and mistaught by believers and non-believers alike. Both sides of the fence love to throw this verse around whenever it comes, uh, uh, when somebody's coming against them with judgment. They love to throw this verse around because they believe that this verse is going to shut down any type of judgment upon them. Right, because after all, this is what the verse says. It's kind of like how people walk around with that stupid tattoo that says only God could judge me. <laughs> no, that's wrong. Yeah. Right, like it's, it's, it's insane. And I love this. Uh, uh, Stuart Weber breaks it down like this in, in breaking down the passage of, of Matthew. He says, what it means is do not judge others until you are prepared to be judged by the same standard. That brings a whole new meaning to things. Do not judge others until you are prepared to be judged by the same standard. And then, he adds, when you exercise judgment towards others, do it with humility. Humility. That's tough. So when Jesus is saying, judge not least you be judged, we have to understand this is not a blanket rule that Jesus is putting out about never judging others. Because truth be told, we are called to judge others. We're not called to judge outside the church, we're called to judge inside the church. So we are indeed called to judge others, just not the way others oftentimes judge. Woo! Right? <laughs> See, if we take a closer look at the passage of Scripture, then what truly begins to be illuminated is what Jesus truly meant when he's addressing this. Judge not least you be judged. Judge not least you be judged. For there will be, for the way you treat others is the way that you're going to be treated. The standard that you use in judging is going to be a standard that is going to be used against you in judging. Then he breaks it down, man. Why are you so concerned? Why are you so consumed with the speck in your friend's eye when you have a daggone plank in your own eye? <laughs> right? Like, this is crazy. How can we be so consumed with what, uh, uh, with what we're trying to say to somebody else to get that speck out of their eye when we first haven't even addressed the plank in our own eye? And he calls us a hypocrite. First, get rid of the plank in your own eye. Then you will see clearly... Because that log, that speck, or that plank is removed from your eye. But see, the problem comes in, church, is that we have this rooted desire to divide the people of this world from good people versus bad people. And let's just be real for a second, if we could. We would, be, uh, we would more times than not see ourselves as the good people. 
right? It's the good people versus the bad people. And oftentimes, the reason why we make excuses for the bad things we do is because we see ourselves as the good people. So in order to see ourselves as the good people, we have to have some reasoning as of to why we do some of the bad things that we do. It's mommy and daddy's fault because they never hugged me enough. It's so-and-so's fault because of things they did to me when I was a toddler. It's so-and-so's fault because they cheated on me. It's so-and-so's fault because they did this to me. It's so-and-so's fault because of this. It's so-and-so's fault because of that. We love to blame everybody else because after all, I'm good and the world and the people of this world indeed are bad. So what we actually end up doing is we take all of these shortcuts in our life to deceive ourselves so that mentally we become unaware that we are in the same category that we are placing the bad people in. And truth be told, oftentimes with me, when I get ticked off at somebody's sin, it's because it's a sin I'm battling with. Right? So I get frustrated when I see somebody else in it because I'm thinking to myself, how the hell can you do this? What is wrong with you? Really, I'm just frustrated and mad at myself because I'm doing the very thing that I'm condemning them for doing, right? But we do this because we have taken these shortcuts. So now we're deceived. And it's crazy because we think that we are good based on a relative standard, our standard. <laughs> Praise the Lord that I don't have the right or the authority to make the standard, right? It's absolutely insane. And what's crazy is we, we, we base ourselves on this relative standard, our standard, and what's crazy is according to our standards, we place ourselves in this category as good and that same standard that we're basing ourselves in the category as good, we're basing somebody else in the category of bad. And thank you, Jesus, that we don't have that authority. Thank you, Jesus, that we don't have that right. And thank you, Jesus, that we can't meet the true standard, the God standard, right? But we absolutely love to look at the sin of man. We absolutely love to look at the mistake of man. If you don't have to show a hands because that would be me. Somebody in here would judge you. <laughs> but how many of you guys in here has ever gotten excited when somebody got caught doing something? <laughs> right? Yes! Right? Right? Like, like we, get, we get excited of the, uh, when we get to look at the sin of man, the mistake of man, the shortcoming of man. But yet when it comes to us, we are so quick to remind ourselves and or anybody else that God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. <laughs> we forgot that when we were looking at somebody else for there you fill in the blank but for us because we're the good people they're the bad people so when it comes to us we are so quick to be reminded that God looks at the outward or doesn't look at the outward appearance but indeed looks at the heart and truth be told for some of us that should scare us a whole hell of a lot more than if he was looking at the outward appearance right it's absolutely insane Christ's teaching, truth be told, in this passage of Matthew, wasn't directed towards the world. It's directed towards us as believers. Right, we have to begin to, to understand this. Now, make no mistake, Jesus, make no mistake, Jesus does, 100% does, expect us to call out the speck in our friend's eye. He does. Especially if that friend is a brother and sister in Christ. He does. Why? Because he wants us to discern sin in other people's lives to help them get rid of it. See, the purpose for judging, the true purpose for judging somebody's weakness, the true purpose on judging somebody's sin, the true purpose on judging somebody's uh, uh, mistakes and shortcomings is to help him or her to truly walk in freedom. The problem comes in with us. We begin to, to act as though we're supposed to judge harshly. The harder we judge, the better off the person's going to be. So we begin the name call. Or we'll turn our backs on them. We'll, we'll rip them apart, right? We'll judge them, not biblically, but we'll judge them pridefully. Right? And, and this is where the problem comes in. 
Because truth be told, nine times out of ten, we don't judge others to help them to truly walk in freedom. We help others to make ourselves feel better in our walk in slavery. So whatever it is that we're being bound to, whatever shortcoming we're, we're chained to, whatever sin we're, we're brainwashed by, right? So we begin to judge people not to help them walk in their freedom, but to make us feel better that we're walking in our slavery. We judge to elevate ourselves over someone else, right? It's crazy. Because truth be told, how on earth can we begin to honestly help somebody if we ourselves are not walking in freedom? See, before we could honestly, and this is what Jesus is talking about, before we could honestly begin to address the speck in our brother's eye, we first, we first have to be so willing to look honestly at our own lives to address the plank in it. We have to be willing to exercise the same judgment towards self that we would begin to give to somebody else. And when we're willing to give that same judgment to self that we give to somebody else, that's when we begin to do judgment from the position of humility. And that's what the Lord is talking about. See, as people, we love to use the phrase, the Lord's just placed this on my heart. Lord's placed it on my heart to call you out for X, Y, Z. He's just placed this on my heart, brother. You got a speck in your eye. Right? Like, like we love this. And truth be told, I'm always cautious when somebody tells me that the Lord put it on their heart. Now, you have my attention if you say the Lord dropped it in my spirit. See, because I'm reminded that Jeremiah says that the heart is deceitful above all things. Hello. Just put it on my heart. Ooh, really? <laughs> Because we was at the club doing the same thing that he, that he put on your heart to call yourself out to. Right like it's absolutely insane. Truth is, truth about us, praise the Lord, is we don't always see things clearly all the time. Oftentimes we, we trick ourselves, we mislead ourselves on what's truly driving us. And oftentimes every single time, you can't honestly begin to predict what's driving somebody else. There's these people that uh, Boo Kitty showed me on um, uh, Facebook, on uh, um, uh, Instagram, Instagram, and it was on Reels, and uh, dude is a, uh, uh, he is a Christian, but it's, it's absolutely hilarious. Because uh, they're making fun of uh, um, uh, worship bands. And uh, one of them, <laughs> my, man, my man, they're singing. And uh, everybody's like gathered around them. And, and they got, you know, the uh, um, um, oriental carpets everywhere. And uh, uh, everyone has their arms raised. <laughs> and all they're singing is chorus, 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 chorus. Chorus, chorus. You know what I mean? And it's awesome because you're like, oh, I get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And 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 I, I I say that because like we 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 do all these things to make us look good, to make us feel good, but yet we're deceiving ourselves the whole entire time. We're pretending. Because if I sing the chorus enough, then truth be told, I'm good. Right? So we pretend that we're something that we're absolutely not. We think that we want everybody to believe that this is driving us. And if I look like this, then, then I'm holy. If, like, it's insane to me how nine times out of ten you can pick a Pentecostal youth pastor. <laughs> right? I'm like, real talk. Right? And that's cool. I'm not, I'm not judging that. Praise the Lord. Truth be told, I used to rock the skinny jeans. Hello. I used to rock the shoes with the pointy toes. Just saying. Right? Hello. I never did. I never was cool enough to rock the cowboy hat thing that they wear. But, uh, but you know, like, like that, you, I get it, man. I get it. However, just because somebody's singing chorus, 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 
don't mean that they know Jesus, 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 Jesus. I had a ride along yesterday and it was really neat, man. I had the opportunity to uh, speak law enforcement and then most importantly had the opportunity to share Jesus. And and my man immediately came back and told me, he goes, man, I, I don't go to church as much as I used to. And so I stopped him because in the conversation I could tell he knew Jesus. Right? So I said, man, you know what's more important to me than you coming to church is you coming to Jesus. Is you knowing Jesus. That's the most important thing. I th and I explained to him. I said, man, church is important. The fellowship, the gathering, the coming together. But understand, my man, the church can never save you. The church will never deliver you. The church will judge you. But the church will never cause you to walk in freedom. Only Jesus does that. I'm not concerned with your church attendance. I'm concerned with your walk in Christ Jesus. Right? So we can't ever begin to look at somebody for the sins we see or the sins we don't see, for the unrighteousness that we begin to perceive or the righteousness that we begin to perceive. We can't ever look at them and go, this is what drives that person because truth be told, the only one who knows that is Jesus and them. Hello. Right? So we have to begin to grab a hold of this. We have to remember that we can never pretend to be good. I was talking to my sergeant and uh, um, um, his daughter actually is in volleyball. Um, um, what is it? Skill. There you go. Volleyball skills with, uh, with my sister and Nora. And uh, uh, so I'm talking to my sergeant last night and he's like, man, I talked to your sister, you know, blah, blah. And he goes, man, she is just good people. And I said, Sarge, did you talk to my sister? And, and he said, yeah, man. He goes, I'm telling you, you could just tell in talking to her. I said, okay. I, so I started to describe my sister. I said, this, this is what my sister looks like, Sarge. Are we sure that we're talking about the same person? She's probably the one cussing the kids out being being crazy because they're not spiking the ball correctly right you know what I mean? but uh, but he said but what was cool is he said to me he goes you know what man he said you could fake it for a second but when you're out you can't fake it that long right like you can't pretend and then I was convinced he did, wasn't talking to my sister but but like, but like like it's insane right so we can't pretend right and, and, and this is the stuff, man, we can never pretend to be good. We can never pretend that, that these people are good and these people are bad. We can never pretend what does and does not motivate us. And we can never pretend in doing what it is that we're doing for a long period of time. If you're pretending, it's going to be exposed. We've seen it time in and time out. So Jesus' statement, judge not least you be judged, zeroes in on the problems of spiritual hypocrisy. It, it zeroes in on self-centered pride. Like how arrogant, how hypocritical, how prideful are we to honestly judge somebody else in a belittling type of judgment in a ripping apart somebody's character type of judgment when we're doing the exact same thing maybe a little bit different but the exact same thing like how crazy and and how ridiculous and how ignorant are we that we can be so consumed with the speck in our brother's eye that we would never even acknowledge the plank in our own eye dare I say how stupid I have been so many times to judge somebody out of sheer arrogantness, out of sheer pridefulness, that I would judge them at this standard and then to be so arrogant to believe that my king would not judge me in the same standard that I just judged them. Isn't that tough? And I can't tell you indeed how many times I've been there. Jesus tells us, man, to take the giant log out of our eye that's blinding us from our own faults before we even dare think about calling somebody else out for their faults, for their sin, for their shortcoming. Truth be told, church, it is absolutely impossible to carry out a kingdom mindset 
to carry out kingdom thinking, kingdom teachings without developing or without maintaining an authentic um, humbleness in our attitude towards others, even in judgment. Right? Again, it's impossible. It's impossible to carry out a kingdom mindset, kingdom thinking or kingdom uh, uh, teaching. It's absolutely impossible to carry that out without maintaining the authentic humbleness in our attitude towards others, even in judgment. Jesus, it tells us in, in the Gospel of Matthew, man, that uh, uh, to show mercy. He goes on, he says, man, give peace even to those who persecute you. Jesus is even want on, wanting us to judge merciful to those who, who come against us, those who want to uh, 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 end us, those who want to rip us apart. He's saying that in our judgment upon them, don't judge them the way they're judging us. Be merciful in your judging. But like that's, that's crazy. Now understand, understand this. There is going to be times in this world. There's going to be times in law that you judge harshly. And I agree with it. There's going to be times in this, in, in this world, in the law, that you judge sternly. And I agree with it. There's going to be times in law that you judge even to the point of death. And I agree with it. Well, you're pro-life. Yeah, I am. And sometimes someone's life ends so that other lives will be saved. I get that. So I agree with that. However, you can do all of that while still operating in humility and mercy. We see this according to Scripture, right? See, the truth is for some of us, we judge like the Pharisees. We judge like the teachers of the law, right? Oftentimes, man, they, just like so many of us, judge out of the uh, um, 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 self-righteousness of who we are. Like, like, if you're like me, then there's been plenty of times that I just thought that my integrity was, was 100% spot on, right? Like, like, I judge because I am holy. And we see that type of attitude with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And here's Jesus, and he stops that dead in their tracks. Jesus is saying, man, I see through their, their holiness to their self-righteousness, to that self-spiritual pride that, that, that is actually morally bankrupt. And he begins to let us know that a faithful God, a, a faithful servant of God will only see himself accurately as he sees others. See, we will recognize our own sinfulness and the need for God's mercy before we begin to try to harshly judge somebody else, right? We will have no reason to consider ourselves better than anyone else. And we see this type of mindset, this attitude in the Gospels, right? We see this. Do nothing out of, out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. He says, rather in humility, value others above yourselves, Paul tells us. Value others above yourselves. See, when Christ teaches, judge not least you be judged, we have to understand that, that he is encountering this, this human tendency to, to take a spiritual truth and twist it so that we become a hypocrite, if you would, just like the Pharisees and the teachers of the law have done. See, because of our pride, it's easy for us to criticize and to begin to judge others to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. But yet, Jesus warns us. Our James warns us, he says, don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. Your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone will give the law. Right? Like this is, this is crazy. Apostle Paul, he says, uh, you may think that you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad. You have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and they should be punished, you are actually condemning yourself. For you who judge others do these very same things. And we know that God, in his justice, will punish anyone who does such things. 
since you judge others for doing these things, why do you think that you can avoid God's judgment when you do the same exact things? That's scripture, man. That's tough. And truth is, when we truly follow Jesus and we begin to apply his teaching, we begin to apply his word to our lives, we first have to ask ourselves when we read it, not, and, and, and when we hear it, how many times have you heard a message and you go, dang it, I wish so-and-so could hear this. <laughs> right? When truth be told, when we hear messages or when we, when we read God's word, we first have to ask God, how does this apply first to my life? How do I apply this? When God begins to reveal his truth to us in his scripture, in prayer, in other means, however it may come to you, right? Our immediate response has to be, okay, Lord, help me with this. Help me to apply this to my life so that you can truly begin to use me. We are commanded to judge not, lest you be judged. To avoid drawing conclusions. To, to begin to avoid judging out of pridefulness. So that we're not judging out of a uh, um, hypocritical state of mind. So that we're not judging out of self-righteousness. But that indeed we're judging out of humility. And righteousness. We have to remember that we can never identify where anybody is truly at in their walk with Christ. We have to remember everybody's going through something and you don't know what everybody's going through. Right? You don't know where everybody is at in their walk. We can never, we can never divide this world into good people versus bad people. The only thing that we can definitely do, the only thing that we can confidently do is cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I close with this, man, we could cry out, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Lord Jesus, help me to have mercy on them as sinners. Jesus, help me not to judge out of a hypocrite state of mind. Jesus, help me not to judge out of my arrogance, out of my pride, but help me to judge out of righteousness from you. Help me to judge out of, out of a, a, a peaceful mindset. Help me to judge desiring true freedom for my brother and my sister because, Jesus, you have showed me true freedom. You've removed the plank out of my eye to allow me to help remove the speck out of my brother's eye. See, oftentimes we act as though because somebody has a speck in their eye that we're supposed to bash them. That we're supposed to rip them apart and in ripping them apart we're going to rip the speck up out of their eye. But truth be told, all we do is put more upon them and ultimately put more in our own eyes. But when we come to him out of sheer humility, Lord, I have planks, I have specks, I have freaking cinder blocks in my eyes that I have suppressed. That I have done a great job of looking over. So please, Lord, reveal what needs to be revealed to me so I would be honored enough to be used to help reveal some specks in my brother's eyes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love you, Jesus. God, you're just incredible. And as we come before you, my King, we first and foremost want to thank you for who you are. For that grace and for that mercy. We want to thank you for rescuing us from the pits of hell, rescuing us from the grips of death. And Lord, as your people that oftentimes we begin to stumble and we battle with self-righteousness, <coughs> we battle with pride. And unfortunately, Lord, I know I could only speak for myself, but sometimes I take that self-righteousness and I take that pride and I begin to use that as a, 
a fundamental foundation on judgment towards others. So Lord, I ask you today to crumble that foundation. Crumble the foundation of self-righteousness that I've used to judge. Crumble the foundation of pridefulness uh, that I've used to judge. Crumble the foundation that I've built brick by brick with being a hypocrite to judge. I ask you, my king, to crumble that today. Reveal in me, my Lord Jesus, the planks that need to be removed out of my own eyes so that you can begin to use me to build a foundation of holiness and righteousness in Christ Jesus to begin to judge others correctly, not for ripping them apart, not for belittling them, not for casting them out, my Lord Jesus, but indeed for helping them to be delivered, to truly walk in freedom in you. Here we are, Lord. Send us to do what it is that you've called us to do, to hold our brother and our sister accountable, yes, but to do it with humility and not pride. To do it with righteousness and not self-righteousness. To do it in truth, in honor, and in love. Lord, use us. Does anybody in the house of God today, and you desire to give your life to the Lord, you realize that He's not condemning you to hell for the things that you have done, but indeed He wants to embrace you and give you an abundant life, a life to the fullest. If that's you today, just simply open up your heart right where you're sitting, right where you're listening. And Lord, we thank you for those people today who are making a decision to call you their Lord and their Savior. For those people who are making a decision today to step into the calling that you've called upon their life to be a son and a daughter of you. Thank you for those people today who are making the decision, my Lord Jesus, to surrender themselves over to you. Thank you for those people today, my Lord Jesus, that you have given the greatest gift of everlasting life as their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I thank you for those people today, my Lord, who are crying out to you to remove the planks, to review, review the planks in their own eyes so that they indeed can be removed. So that they can see clearly as your scripture says. God, and then I thank you that they will indeed go out of here to their brothers and sisters and hold them in a place of humility, in a place of holiness and righteousness as they begin to help them with removing the specks in their eyes. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you. And our God's baby said, so stand to your feet, man. We're going to have uh, some music on. If you want prayer for anything, we would love nothing more than to pray with you guys. We love you all like crazy, man. But please remember that Jesus is madly and passionately in love with each and every single one of y'all. And remember, ask the Lord, whether it's here now or when you're walking out of these doors, but ask the Lord to begin to show you planks in your eyes that indeed need to be removed. Amen? We love you guys.